Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Murray. I work for Dare Arts. I am the Remote Programs Manager and uh, my work is in uh, two indigenous communities, flying communities in the far north, Attawapiskat First Nations and Webaquay First Nations. And I lead teams up there doing arts and music based workshops with the students in the north. And um, so what I'm going to do for you guys today is uh, a follow up to our intro to painting video. So I'm super excited to do this. I love painting. I, um, I did it in high school. I never went to, to college or university for it. I've done a lot of practice like, through books and online stuff. And, and I've just really developed a passion for it. So I want to share that with you primarily. That this is all about a love of art. It's not about being Leonardo da Vinci or whoever. Uh, you admire as an artist. It's just about exploring and learning. So that's what we're going to do today. But we're going to do a little bit more of an advanced workshop than we did the last time, which was using household items like a toothbrush and plates and three basic primary colors to create a painting. I'm going to share with you guys how that turned out, okay? It's been drying and uh, it, it was pretty cool. I was pretty happy with how it worked out. Um, we have some water and some birds and sunset. It was all done with a toothbrush and a little bit of brushwork at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand on that now. So what I've done is I've done a pre-sketch on my, on my uh, canvas. And again, it's very simple, okay? So we're going to use that same landscape idea. We're going to have some water here. But we're going to do it what's called a silhouette, okay? So it's just a black outline that you'll do after you do your, your, your wash with the landscape, with the sky and then the water, okay? So here, you can see you've sketched out some palm trees and just this kind of rustic looking shack on the side. I just did it freehand, but you could, if you like, just find a picture, you could just Google a silhouette and sketch it beforehand. We do that because this will show through the paint and I'll be able to trace that with with black and that's what I'll use for it. Now, uh, before I was using a garbage bag and we just kind of bundled it up after as my drop sheet and, and just threw it away. But that's not very environmentally sound. So, but I showed you that in case you don't have a cloth like this. So this is just an old uh, tablecloth that I've kept for years. You can see there's tons of color on it. And I use that as, as a uh, drop sheet from when I'm painting and it can cover this whole table so it's great. Um, what I'm going to use now is we're going to tape this down to a board so that it'll dry flat. We talked about that in our intro that when you apply water to this painting it will curl up. So this board is just particle board that I bought at the dollar store so I have two backings that I can use uh, which is great. So like while one's drying, I could use the other one again. So you can pick that up and you can just cut it in two like I did. And it fits a nice 8 by 11 uh, picture really well. The other cool thing is when you tape this down like this, you will end up with a nice uh, white border all the way around your painting. It'll look really clean and neat. So that's another advantage to taping this down. I'm just using regular old masking tape guys for this, okay? So we're, we're again, as I said in the first uh, lesson, taking our time to prepare, okay? So we're preparing for success. So we'll have everything we need here ready to go when we start painting. That way, you can take advantage of uh, the fact that, you know, the paint will dry fairly quickly but you'll be there and ready to, to work with it. You won't have any problems that way. Okay? So that's, that's why we set up like this. Because paint does dry quickly, acrylic paint. Acrylic paint um, is one of the types of paints that you can use with water. Okay? So I'm going to get rid of this. You don't need that anymore. We have our paper towel. Okay? We take two sheets. Alright? And just fold it over like that. Boom put that over here. We also have our special guests again. Geraldine, Zuby, and Ellie are here to help us out and just to be a fun presence because they are super fun. So I'm going to have my brushes in this holder that I showed last time. It has a metal screen in the bottom 
that we can use to clean our brushes and you can hang your brushes from there too which is great it's a great tool and we're going to use a tray like this a mixing tray that you can get at the dollar store okay um, and again we're going to focus mainly using our primary colors our red blue and yellow and we're going to create secondary colors and we're going to use white and black for accents however I'm going to direct your attention to this so this is a kit I shared with you before that I bought at Winners um, and it was half the price. So I'm just going to take all the tubes out and lay them out here and as we're doing our picture if I decide that I want to add a bit more color complexity to my my painting I have the colors available and ready to go and that's sort of how I like to work. I like to have everything out in case I need it. All right. I could, um, you know, narrow this down based on the fact that I'm doing a sunset and water, but I'm just going to put them all out here just so you get an idea of what we're doing. Okay, so we have our painting tape down, we have our tray, we have the brushes, we have our paper towel. I also have some extra brushes that I'm going to share with you. And I have some other water here too, just in case, okay, because I want clean water when I'm working. So these are a bit wider. Okay, another detail brush. This one has a flat, flat end, and it's good for doing certain techniques, and I'll show you, and there's another rounded one that I have. Okay, so we have a variety of brushes this time. Before, we actually did that painting with a toothbrush. Now we're going to go with full-on brushes. Let's get started. We're going to put the blue in here. Okay, so we squirt it in, and we recap right away. Okay, it keeps our paint good. We don't want our paint to dry out. It can dry out quickly, you'd be amazed. So we squirt some yellow in there. Now we have a bunch of different yellows, so to make my sunset look even more complex, I'm going to use other yellows beside it. So we're going to have lots and lots of the color variety in, in our painting. I'm going to use two reds, okay? So we are adding to our primary color palette by adding in these different color reds that you can get with a paint kit like this. And it wasn't that much to, to get all this. And again, you can get all these paints at the dollar store. But, you know, if you have a, a budget, start with your primary colors. You just need these three and a white and a black, okay? So you need red, yellow, blue, and white and black. And you're off to the races. You have everything you need. Okay, so we're going to add some white in there for lightning. And I, I'm adding a lot of color to, to the tray, as you can tell. Because when I start, I don't want to have to stop to add color that I need. I want to get into a flow. So I'm preparing everything that I need. Now, I only added one blue in, so I think I'm going to go for this nice light blue. I could also make this with white, okay? But I'm going to add that in because I want to have a bit more depth and variety to, to the painting that I'm doing. Okay, so we're again, we're going to start in a specific spot with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sky first. So we are going with our reds and our yellows, okay? This time I'm going to use a larger brush, so it covers a lot of area. I'm going to get it wet first, okay? Really soak it in here. I use my drop cloth here right beside it just to kind of brush it off, make sure it's nice and saturated. Okay, and then... We're going to mix up a really nice looking orange for our, our sunset background, okay? So here we go. There's one yellow, another yellow, the two reds. Just dabbing the red because remember, red really takes over, okay? So that's a really cool orange we got there, right? That's a good start. We add some yellow into there, make it a bit streaky. There we go. Okay, and some red. All right. Now I want that streaky kind of look when I do this. So I'm going to instantly just go into the water and boom, I'm going right to the page. Just like that. And don't hesitate, guys. Remember we talked about this before. Just put it all on there. A little bit more water. Now I'm just going to do straight yellow, mix it in with my orange as I get closer to the bottom where the water hits. I'm going to go a little bit over the water so we'll have an overlap effect when I add in the blue. Okay, and then we're going back and forth. Let's add a little red at the top of the sky, where the sky might be a bit more intense, okay? Add some bright yellows down at the bottom. Yeah, I'm liking this. We're going to clean my brush, okay? 
I want to get some pure yellow streaks down at the bottom. So blot it out on your paper towel. Make sure it comes up clean. Take the yellow, big glob of paint, and just... And now i got some texture in there, which is super cool. Even going into the red area a little bit with it. Okay, and then in the red, I'm going to add some texture too, just big globs of paint. I like that textured look. It's really cool. Okay. I'm doing some dabbing effects with this, just kind of make it look a little different, you know. Okay, we're going to clean the brush. Again, I'm experimenting with the brush techniques, and that's something you can do. We're going to take this flat brush, flat top brush, get it wet, dig it in there, and just chunk up this paint a bit, you know. Add some a little bit more of a... Of a interest to the sky so it doesn't look like it was perfectly formed okay make it a bit more natural looking here we go all right i'm going to share this with you guys and just see how it goes the funny the cool thing about paintings is like as it dries your painting starts to take on a different look right it gets richer like the colors really deepen and um, i've often marveled at that like when you do something and then you look at it later and you go wow that turned out better than i thought so that's what I recommend too, guys, is when you're done your painting, just kind of leave it for a little bit and then come back to it. And you'll see how those colors really intensify and become something else. Now, if you can see up here, uh, come closer, you can see that there's quite a bit of texture and depth in that sky, which is awesome. I love that. Okay, that's drying. We're going to switch to doing our, our blue here, okay? And what's really fun about this is like when I'm done, I'm going to show you the difference between this one and um, the one we did with the toothbrush. And this one is spending a little bit more time in our planning too, okay? So I'm going to go to the blue now. Um, I'm going to use that same big brush because you saw how fast it, co it covered our area. And that's the thing when you're doing this sometimes is you need that speed so you can get your uh, colors in and work it like we just did and adding in that you know the thick ridges of yellow that we did okay so we have our blues we're gonna go with the blues we got our big brush we get it nice and wet okay um, my water is now gone a bit orange so I'm gonna go to my clean water now that's why we have the backup water so it's always good to remember that when you're doing this kind of picture to have a nice clean water supply nearby beside where you're cleaning your brushes okay all right let's do this so we got a little bit of blue a little bit of light blue all right and we got our white we're gonna mix it in a little pocket tray beside here okay so we're just gonna go over here like that all right I want a little bit lighter add that in there and let's get that dark blue okay now remember before like we did with the water we want that kind of streaky look so I'm going straight to the page into the water straight to the page no hesitation boom like this, we're gonna go right up over into where we did our overlap with the with the sky and just completely cover our page like that. Nice and fast. No hesitation. More water. Get that get that uh, beautiful blue color in there. Okay. Now I think by my, my shoreline the blue is, is pretty dark. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to go with what the painting has given me and work that way. So I'm going to go up there with some dark paint up near the top. That's where our darker water is going to be. And we'll keep the lighter water down below. Just like that. Add some white. Just streak it in there. Remember we want a texture, right? So I'm going to just blob it in there. Blob it in. Yeah. Well, that's a big piece of texture. <laughs> just chunk it in. Just slap it on there. Don't be afraid, guys. Just put it on. Remember where, with our toothbrush, I found like just kind of doing this really gave you like this kind of realistic wave effect. So we're going to continue with that and just kind of move, work the brush. I'm going to switch brushes now. I'm going to leave that hanging in here in the water. I'm going to switch to the smaller brush for this texture of the waves thing that we're doing. Just kind of dig in there and dig and twist and just be brave, you know, just throw it in there. You, you, usually it will turn out well. It may not be exactly as you envisioned it, but that's okay. You know, it's discovery, right? Art is a lot of discovery and uh, experimentation. 
So I never want you guys to feel like, is this right or is this wrong? <laughs> you know? Because it's all about how you interpret it too, right? Like the way I'm doing this water, you might look at it and go, oh, dude, that's a little weird. I'm even adding black in there. But you may see it a different way entirely, right? And that's cool. That's why we have such great uh, diversity in our art that we've seen throughout the years, like great artists like Michelangelo and Picasso and Emily Carr from the Group of Seven, in, uh, a Canadian artist. And they, the Group of Seven is a good example of that, how they painted landscapes that were really kind of the same often in the far north of Ontario and in BC. But the, the way that they turned out was very different. So we'd be encouraged by that, by I need some more white, by professional uh, you know, painters that, that would paint something the same, but their own vision would come through on, on the painting and it would give it a uniqueness. So each of us has a unique value that we can add to art. So remember that, okay? So this white, here, I'm really gonna play with these waves. I want them to look the way I want them to. So I'm giving some motion here. Often I find like the motion that you want in your painting, you can indicate or, or control by the motion you, you, you put into your brush when you're doing it, okay? So uh, what I'm finding here is that the blue is really influencing my uh, painting. I'm going to go to a smaller brush, and I'll show you this in a second, guys. I know it's hard for you to see. I apologize. I just want to get this, this uh, while it's wet. So I'm going to go straight to uh, pure white here and take a really kind of a detailed brush. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Let's try this guy. Okay, and we're gonna take just the pure white. Okay, and just it's big and chunky. I'm gonna come over there and show you. And we're just gonna go in, just kind of lightly put that white into parts of the painting. Look how thick it is, textured, right? And that's cool. I'm gonna leave it like that, thick. I'm gonna take some more. Our white, it's a big glob, and just glob it in. Now, it's kind of looking cool in a way. And let's get some more white and glob it in right around here. I feel, yeah, all right. And then we're just going to do a little bit of pressing down with the brush. Just kind of pressing down into our painting, right? Yeah. And it's giving it a bit of a different kind of a rough texture with all that smooth brushing that we did before, which I wanted the water to have a sense of motion to it, right? So now I'm kind of patting in there and, and dimming, that, dimming that down a little bit. And the white is adding some nice variety in there. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the way the water looks. Um, and the sky, the texture is really adding some coolness to it. Cool factor 10. <laughs> All right. So here, uh, guys, is where we're going to go into the silhouette part. Now, my tray is completely covered in paint, but I still have that black that I put in there at the beginning. Because black, as we said in our intro to painting, is a very influential color. I mean, it's really all the colors coming mixed into one. We'll give you black. This is another way to create black, too, if you don't have it. It's just put all the paint together, zing, 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 and uh, you will get something close to black. But we do have it, so. This is not a problem for us, okay? Geraldine, that's, I know that's not my real voice. I'm just playing around. She's always concerned about quality. Thank you, Geraldine. That's very nice. She's keeping her eye on me today. Okay, here we go, guys. Um, very, very small brush, detail brush. Okay. I got this at Michael's. 
Now I'm going to go to our silhouette and I'm just going to line out the edges with it, with my detail brush, okay? And um, let me come over there and do that so you guys can see. It's just really much better, I think, if you can see. Okay, I'm going to show you. I think I'll be fine from here. Um, <clears throat> so this is really cool. You don't have to press heavy. You don't need a lot of paint. It's the brush that helps you. Now, this is wet, so if I put my hand on there, actually, it might be a cool effect. Maybe we'll try that later. But anyway, I just lightly line up the silhouette. And I just keep retracing over it. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's a silhouette, right? It's nighttime. When I'm done this too, I'm going to go right across the top here and separate the land so I can still see my palm trees that I did earlier. I'm just lightly sketching over the pencil lines that are already there. So as I said before when we were started, when you, f when you do your landscape, you will still be able to see what you've drawn in pencil, which is so cool. That you won't see the pencil marks after because you're now painting them, okay? So from a distance, this is where this will really come in, where silhouettes really come into play. Um, I'm just playing around a bit now. These aren't, these aren't even things that I traced before. I'm just playing, having fun. Giving it that, that cool palm tree look, okay, at night. So this would be like if you're in the tropics somewhere and you're looking out at night, you would see this kind of silhouette. Now we just go along the, our, our line here between um, the water and the sky. And the, the blue is still wet and it's coming into my black, but that's okay. It's still, the black is still exerting its... Uh, dominant, shall we say, over the other color. Okay, let's put a little bit here. And just really kind of firm that up. Got a bit of a rise in the hill there, that's okay. And there's that blue coming in. Okay, so I might need a little bit more black, but I'm trying to finish this. Here we go, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go back here, guys, and uh, we'll take a look at this picture. Um, from a distance, okay? And that's where it really comes into, into play. One island silhouette. Okay, so it looks kind of weird now <laughs> because it's, you see how the outside lines of the board? So I'm gonna take it off the board now and I wanna compare it to the one that we did before so you can get an idea of how these, using um, good brushes and more paint colors will change the outcome of your, your picture and it allows you to do a little bit more with it. In our next series of painting series, what we're going to do is we're going to copy an object, okay? That's going to be really cool. So we're going to find an object and uh, sketch and trace it and then we'll examine it and we'll try and paint a copy of the object. A lot of times you'll see like fruit bowls, people will do fruit bowls. So we may do that, we may do a bowl of fruit, which would be kind of fun. And uh, so this is sort of like improv stuff, but this time, the next lesson, we're gonna do copying a picture, uh, and a, let's go with the fruit bowl, I like that idea, um, in the next series. So here we go, there's the two paintings side by side, okay? So here's the first one done with tooth toothbrush. And again, I'm really happy with how that turned out. And then here's our second one, what we did with the brushes and the silhouette. Also really happy with that. And I like the texture in the water, the motion, um, and I like the texture in the sky too. So it's really cool and I'm really happy with it. Um, so there we took our, our intro painting, we took it to another level um, by using a little bit better of equipment, um, some different colors, and planning our sketch ahead of time. So in our next painting lesson, uh, we're going to do the fruit bowl. Okay, so um, what I'll have is I'll put out a bowl of fruit right in the front here, 
and uh, we'll sketch and copy and I'll show you ways of sketching and copying something so that you can come close to it and then we'll look at the colors and the shadows like that's where you work with like shading and things like that and um, we'll get into that and then we'll try and recreate that fruit bowl together so that's going to be super fun i'm looking forward to that um i just want to close guys just take a, a few seconds and reflect on what you've learned today how you feel uh, about it, how you felt during the process. Because sometimes trying something new, it can be a little scary, right? So um, I'm proud of you for taking this 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 step forward and being brave in your actions. So DARE stands for discipline, action, respect, and excellence. So again, the discipline was setting everything up and being organized and following through and finishing our painting. Um, the action piece is just doing it, you know, like some, I'm not a visual artist by trade, I'm a musician. So for me, taking action and doing this is a, a little scary, but I'm glad I did. I enjoyed it. And painting is something I like learning about. And um, the respect you get is just by trying something new. You gain higher levels of self-respect and that allows you to respect other people. And the excellence is in the work that you do at the end. It's not about like, this is the most excellent painting on the planet. It's just like, I've achieved an excellent piece of work here by putting the best effort that I had into it. And that's the excellence I'm talking about. And these kind of leadership skills, guys, are totally transferable um, into school projects, being organized, getting things done on time, taking action, trying new things. Uh, trying for a high high quality level of excellence and, and respect for your, what you're doing and yourself. So it's pretty simple. Um, I want to thank you for this time together. I look forward to our next session where we're going to paint a fruit.